and welcome back. This is your man, Warrior, and this is a quick game update. That is right. We're so excited. Yesterday, they said these release notes were coming out. EA Jesse's given us the lowdown. What we're going to do is breeze through these notes really quick and then go in-game to check out some of the updates that they're talking about. So currently, quickly, what's new? R2-D2 has been added to the game. The ship, Gauntlet Starfighter, has been added to to the game and general veers has been reworked looks different plus a couple events have been added the r2d2 event which will be a legendary event the legendary events in the past that we've had are empire and yoda and then elite combat event three which will be for the Gauntlet Starfighter. Now, R2-D2 arrives in Galaxy of Heroes on the event, which they're going to have on May the 4th, which is awesome. May the 4th be with us. Um, he'll be a, a versatile support droid. Um, he's been seen on the Death Star, so that's a clue as to what the background is going to be in the event. Pretty exciting. It says they're going to have to gather our empire forces so now we know what we need to build up to go and get our r2d2 and defeat the famous crew of the millennium falcon to capture r2 the daring droid a rare multi-tiered event can you foil the rebels plans and capture the legendary astromech so a new character r2d2 we're going to go into his abilities when we get into game for the May Daily Login character and Faction Pass, there's two things about that. One, the Empire is always formulating new strategies to crush the Rebel threat. General Veers is the Daily Login for May and heads the charge with a new Empire Faction rework that will introduce the Imperial trooper faction pretty exciting a whole new faction called imperial troopers and he's going to be the first of many inside of there it says with the addition of the new imperial trooper category debuting in may troopers that's i'm assuming troopers in the game it's pretty much there's a lot of troopers in the game it says well troopers will share a variety of unique abilities and advantages becoming a much more formidable force so this is exciting because it looks like there's more coming out in this uh next may uh, specifically for all of the troopers i'm excited to hear about more of what they're going to be doing for the troopers it says general veers can bring the full might of his troopers to bear on the filthy rebel scum with his incredible trooper synergies now additional information for that in the trooper category is going to be shared next week as far as character updates, General Veers has now been added to the Imperial Trooper category, and he's been reworked. We'll go over that in a minute. Newt Gunray has had uh, their his leadership ability adjusted. Basically, they took the turn meter gain on critical hits from 20, 25, and 30 at ranks 3, 5, and 8 up to 30, 40, and 50%. So uh, turn meter gain increase is significantly more now on critical hits, but it will now only trigger once per turn. So like a multi-hit or a multi-attack and AOE abilities will only trigger the effect once. So in, in, you won't be getting it multiple times as far as that increase uh, a turn meter gain on critical hits. The new character faction we've mentioned uh, before was the Imperial Troopers. There's now another faction called the Galactic Republic. Now there was the Republic tag earlier, but there was nothing in the Republic tag for characters. Now they've got an entire group of characters in there. All characters relevant to the Galactic Republic era have now received the Galactic Republic faction tag. Uh, we'll go ahead and go into the game and look at that in a second as well. And that's basically your general Jedi, your clones, R2-D2, and surprisingly, Coruscant Underworld Police will be in there. New packs and bundles. So there's going to be, of course, the Gauntlet Starfighter Bundle, which is the $9.99 thing, I think, or whatever, that gives you an extra 25 blueprints to take it up another star level. And there's going to be the packs. The pack is going to be the one for $12.99 that gives you the five shards with that chance to potentially get 30 blueprints um, potentially in there. 
The shard shop and character cadence update. This is the most exciting part of this entire entire section is watching characters go free to play. So director Krennic and death trooper are now coming out of the shard shop and the following characters are going to be added into the shard shop. That is Darth Nihilus has come into the shard shop sith trooper and sith assassin are in the shard shop now for anyone saying man i never have shard currency in the shard shop don't worry check this out these characters also have been added to nodes darth nihilus is on the dark side hard node 9a so everybody should be able to farm darth nihilus when they're up at the highest end of the game, which he's an end game character. So that makes sense for them to put him on a hard node at the top. And Sith Trooper and Sith Assassin are both in Cantina Battles, level eight, B and C. That means as long as you've got that level eight cleared out, which is easier than even the hard nodes on light and dark side, you will be able to unlock and level up your Sith Trooper and Sith Assassin. That is super exciting. As far as events, Assault Battle Forest Moon is going to be updated to coincide with the new update of the Imperial Troopers, which is that new faction they're working on. It says, we've retuned this event and updated the rewards. This event will run in May, so get your Empire and or your droid characters ready for a fight. Now, it'll have three tiers, hard, very hard, and bonus bonus meaning whale status no i'm just kidding it'll be hard very hard and bonus which bonus is going to be very 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 difficult it says the difficulty's been readjusted across all tiers to meet the goal of providing challenging content at the level of the tier this means not everybody's going to beat every level that's not what these are intended these will come back over and over and if you can't beat it well the good news is you'll have something to look forward to instead of just smoking through it right away so it's something that will come back and back in the future uh, of course, descriptions um, have been updated to clearly state the recommended player or unit level and the recommended gear level for participating units. Now, please note, since there are so many possible squad configurations, uh, some units in certain combinations are naturally going to have an easier time completing the event than others. I think we all know that. Repeat completion rewards have been completely overhauled now each win will now grant four shards of a single ewok credits salvage and a single mod of four dots or better yes that is awesome in general rewards should feel more useful and should consist of more things which are needed so hopefully that means the salvage they give you is going to be more worthwhile and something you could actually use versus uh, gear in the past that hasn't been something you've needed the first time rewards which are significantly higher are, remain unchanged the deadly buff that some equawks have in this event um, have had their description updated and now feature the little lock icon effect to denote that it is not subject to being dispelled. Tebow in Encounter 4 is now correctly tagged as a boss and is using the correct boss stats for his encounter. That's really not something you need to worry about except there are certain abilities that work one way and on the other. For example, Darth Nihilus will do 100,000 damage to a boss but will destroy normal characters. So Darth Nihilus would not be able to annihilate Tebow in Encounter 4. He would only be able to do 100,000 damage, which I hope is enough to take Tebow out. The event power, Defend, has been updated as follows. It now grants 80% defense, 100% critical avoidance, and restores 20% of a unit's maximum health. So they've increased it from 70% defense and 10% health, um, gone up 10% on each of those, and given it 100% crit avoidance. Pretty cool. This last, this ability lasts for one turn, and it has a two-turn cooldown. So you can use it every other turn. That's pretty exciting. The description for Defend has been updated to reflect the changes above. 
updated refresh costs to match assault battle places of power note that refreshing any tier refreshes only that tier elite combat three is going to say with all previous tiers successfully completed now is the time to utilize all of the gauntlet starfighters abilities to effectively defeat the rebels in this final event gather your best fleet for more information be sure to review april 11th game update notes and they have a link to find those game update notes they've also fixed a bug that caused the tuscan shaman's right of savagery during rank 8 to heal too much or more than it was intended on rank 8 and ships will no longer flicker when selected in the fleet management screen now let's go ahead and go into game and check out some of these updates all right the first thing we know is that there are new cantina battles sith assassin is on 8c and sith trooper is on 8b and that is for an end game user relatively easy to get to and to do those are level 85 bosses and level 84 bosses so you should be able to unlock those when you're in game that's exciting now we can farm those guys there was currently uh, in the past nothing on these dark side battle nodes at all. Now Darth Nihilus is the first, which makes him the easiest in the ninth level to farm. This node wasn't as difficult, in my opinion, as the nodes for Shore Trooper and Bays. This is a much easier node. You're going against Jedi, so taking your Darth Maul will probably mop hit, mop this level up pretty easily, which is really awesome. Now in the Shard Shop, of course, General Grievous has been in here for a very long time, but Darth Nihilus is in here, Sith Assassin is in here, Sith Trooper is in here, and of course, your other general random characters. There is now a Galactic Republic tag and all Jedi and all clones as well as Coruscant Underworld Police and the Clone Wars Chewbacca. Basically, um, anybody that had to do with the Galactic Republic era. So R2-D2, Clone Wars, Chewbacca, Coruscant Underworld Police, clones and Jedi are essentially the ones that are in here. So that you will have as a new tag interesting we'll now be able to see some future synergies with these specific groups the gauntlet starfighter has now been added it's an empire support ship and it is actually a very cool ship obviously you'd have to farm his two pilots to be able to use this ship uh, but it is something that the empire has longed for one they do not have a lot of empire ships in this makes only the fourth empire ship the first ability called Reinvigorate will dispel all debuffs on your allies and grant them protection up for two turns, and it's doubled for Empire allies, so it's 18% or 36%. If you Omega it, it's going to be 20 or 40% of protection up. Pretty awesome. This is similar to uh, what the Light Side has as far as the protection up, but the dispelling of debuffs. Uh, since you're not using Admiral Akbar and you're using Grand Moff Tarkin's ship, the Executrix, this kind of gives you that dispel that you've needed. And it's all allies, which is really, really nice. The Proton Missile Launcher will deal physical damage to a target enemy and inflict buff immunity. This is awesome because buff immunity, especially against tanks, will... Um, make sure that they cannot taunt for the rest or the duration of the battle, which is excellent. So that way you can chew through who you want to chew through without a tank taunting. This is uh, like the second ship that's able to throw buff immunity over a ship's head. That is good. On the basic, it's going to deal physical damage, of course, and it will grant another ally turn meter if that ship was target locked. With an Empire team, you're probably guaranteed to have a bunch of turn lock over there. So this is going to do damage and speed up your team. Pretty cool. And then, of course, it has superior maneuverability, which sounds very cool. It says the Starfighter is going to have an additional 20 speed right out the gate. That makes it much faster and gains an additional plus five speed for each other active empire ally let's say you've got three or four that's an extra 15 or 20 speed so there's another 
35 to 40 speed total in addition to it. So he's going to be, this is going to be a fast ship. It says additionally, it grants 20% defense to all allies and it's doubled for empire. That's 20 to 40% defense. Now checking out the stats, obviously I don't have the crew very high. So the stats coming in right now, the upgrade multipliers, a one X, you can get up to 1.5. Uh, but currently the ship has 110 speed, which is kind of slow, but at max, it's going to be significantly higher. Adding all those additional speed bonuses will make it one of the five fastest ships in the game if you're using it with other Empire. It does look like it's going to be underpowered as far as the power stat goes, but don't let that deceive you. The toolkit of the Gauntlet Starfighter looks very promising. And here's General Veers with the new Imperial Trooper tag. And look at how shiny his chest plate is. That is awesome. I, they did a phenomenal job with the artwork on him. And they've messed with his abilities. Let's just go ahead and go in. I have him now tagged as a favorite since he's been reworked. I'm going to start getting him up. I've got him at gear 9, almost gear 10, so that is good because it sounds like something pretty promising is coming down the way. On his first basic during attack, it will deal physical damage uh, to an enemy with a 70% chance to grant speed up for two turns to General Veers and a random Imperial Trooper ally who doesn't have the speed up. That's pretty cool. For his first special, Ruthless Assault, it says it will deal special damage to all enemies with a 55% chance to inflict ability block for one turn, dealing 10% more damage for each living rebel enemy. So if he's going against a rebel team, that's 50% more damage, uh, potentially. That is a lot more damage. It also says call all other Imperial Trooper allies to assist, they will deal 40% less damage. So this is much similar to Cody's attack where he can have all the clones attack. It's kind of similar to General Kenobi's attack where he can have everybody attack uh, because, th but this one, it just allows for all the Imperial Troopers uh, allies that are called to assist, uh, which is really, really cool. You could make a fun trooper team and go against rebels. I think this is pretty exciting. His second or his third ability is his leadership ability. And it goes up to an Omega and it says empire allies will gain 30% offense. So those are your troopers that you're going to have behind him. And it says imperial trooper allies will gain 20 speed. This is a lot of of speed that is exciting it says and they gain 10 percent turn meter whenever they gain a buff so he's giving them buffs and those buffs are going to give them turn meter plus he's giving them base speed that's significantly higher 20 points higher that is awesome his unique aggressive tactics is going to be able to be zated and it says whenever an enemy is defeated while veers is active means he's on the board it says imperial trooper allies will gain offense up for two turns gain 50 percent turn meter and recover 10 percent protection that's pretty amazing because he's going to give all of the trooper allies that offense up that turn meter and the protection so the more they kill people the faster they the stronger they get the faster they get and the harder they hit this is a, a steamroller type ability and it's called aggressive tactician i think it's very cool i am excited to see this play out for sure i can't wait to get him maxed out and play it with him hopefully soon we'll learn more about the other imperial troopers currently he is the only Imperial Trooper in here tagged, but we know they said there was more coming out. So I am excited. Uh, if we go into Empire, I have a feeling that we could probably, and I'm just guessing here, I have no idea, but I am guessing that Shore Trooper could potentially be one of them that's eventually added. Potentially Death Trooper could be added maybe to this Imperial Trooper type list. Um, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. It could just be the old school, uh, troopers as well, such as Magna Trooper. Magma Trooper would be a possibility that goes in there and gets reworked. Potentially Snow Trooper could go in there and get reworked. And that would be exciting. 
Uh, the old-fashioned Stormtrooper breathes some life into him. He's uh, pretty low on the totem pole for everybody right now, and he's an iconic character, so he would be exciting. And lastly, R2-D2. Now, he's wearing a ton of tags. He's light side. He's droid. He's the new Galactic Republic. He's the Rebels. He's resistance. He's support. So you can put him in a resistance team, a Rebels team. You can put him with... You can put them with clones. You can put them with Jedi. This is exciting. R2-D2 is going to be usable in lots of teams. Now, I've looked at his kit. I'm not sure he is the like solution completely to the Maul meta, but I do think that he is going to open up a lot of other teams as being viable. Now, he unlocks with 145, and they said it would be a legendary event. Let's go through these. His basic Electroshock Rotting level one will go up to deal physical damage to a target enemy with an 80% chance to stun for one turn. This attack deals 30% more damage to burning targets. So I really hope that the AI plays him on defense by using his ability, um, the, Im the improvise ability that he has that will burn targets. And then he can do his basic, you know, stun them and have it do 30% more damage. That's pretty cool. Smoke screen. This one really intrigues me. It says that a target ally is going to gain foresight and advantage and that for two turns. And then all other allies are going to gain stealth for two turns. And then he gets turn meter, R2-D2 does. So he speeds himself up. He makes everybody you know, stealth, except for one person. And the one person is going to be unhittable. You can't hit them because of the foresight and they're going to get advantage. So, and it's target. So you get to choose. So you pick somebody that maybe has a counter capability. They're going to get foresight and advantage, which means they're guaranteed to crit, guaranteed not to be hit. And it's going to speed R2-D2 up. And he's the only, that will be the only target that anybody will be able to go for, such as maybe Ayla. And then they're going to go for Ayla. They're going to miss because of the foresight. And then she's going to whack them and stun them with her basic. It's a pretty interesting the amount of combinations you could use with Smokescreen. This is exciting. And it may not defeat the, the uh, Sith meta. But what it will do is give other teams, many other teams, clones and Jedi and all, a lot of other teams, re Resistance, the ability to have a Maul-like evasion team and stealth team so this is really kind of cool improvise is where it, it's going to be an aoe or an area of effect that's going to deal special damage to all enemies and inflict burning for three turns it says this attack cannot be evaded now it doesn't say anything in here on improvise but in the notes in the patch notes if you remember it said targets that are burning will have reduced evasion which means uh that they're not going to be able to dodge and stuff as much when they're burning so he's going to damage them all which can't be evaded and then they're going to be easier to hit they're not going to dodge as much like the current mall meta so this will help because it'll be able to do damage to all of them and then slow all of their rolls as far as all of the dodging it's definitely going to help this will be uh, some assistance Combat analysis is his first unique, and it says while he's active, and I like this how if it has really cool abilities if the character's alive and those abilities go away, just like General Veers had an ability like that. It says while R2-D2 is active, all allies will gain critical chance 10% and accuracy 10%. This is kind of like mods. I mean, it, add, it, it brings their critical chance up significantly and their accuracy up significantly. And we know accuracy is a direct counter to the evasion and dodge. So that is also very cool to see. And it says, while R2-D2 is active, meaning he's still alive and on the board, whenever a light side ally, so we're hoping you play him with light side, this is the point not to put them on a mall team <laughs> um, whenever they score a critical hit they're going to dispel all the debuffs on them so all these debuffs that they're getting over their head all they have to do is what they have always done which is crit think about bigs and wedge they're going to get these debuffs like days and other stuff and then you're going to be able to use them on their turn to do what they do which is these crits and then it's going to they're going to clear themselves by doing those crits this really brings Rebels 
uh, back kind of to center focus. I know a lot of people that might not be happy about that, but with the mall meta, it would be nice to be able to see something other than just, you know, 50% Rex and 50% mall. And for those of you using Rebels already, this might just give you a competitive edge. The second unique is called Number Crunch. And it's kind of an interesting one. You really have to do a lot of theory crafting and decide how you want to go with it. It says at the start of the battle, R2-D2 gains 10% max protection for each droid. So if you're playing with four other droids, he's going to get 40% max protection, which is going to keep him around a lot longer. Or you could put him in with Galactic Republic allies and he gets 10% offense for each Galactic Republic ally. Or you could go Rebels and you could get, you know, up to plus 40% max health for each Rebel ally. And if you went with Resistance, you could get up to 40% potency. And if you had a hodgepodge mixed team where Ray was on there, he'd get extra potency. If Biggs and Wedge were on there, he'd get an extra, you know, 20% health. If you had someone like Ayla Secura, he'd get an extra 10% offense. And maybe have B2 Battle Droid with him, he'd get an extra 10% protection. So this is a mix and match way of making him exactly how you want him. If you want 10% or 40% of something or anything in between, you can decide on what character synergy you want to bring in to make him better. This is excellent. And I love how, uh, the ability that we're going to be able to use him uh, very soon by May 4th to be able to unlock him and start gearing him up in a legendary event, which means that everybody that have the Empire and have a good team should be able to unlock R2-D2 and immediately start using him. We should see him flood the meta report. I am excited to see all of the different creations out in the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes universe. As always, leave your comments down below. Tell me what you think and keep your gaming on, warrior out.